Hello, welcome to night two of the Synergy N7 build series. Um, tonight we are going to get the RPM sensor mounted, uh, quickly talk about the various RPM sensors you can use, and then I am going to um, dive into the main frames and start looking like a helicopter tonight. Uh, last night we cleaned up most of the sub-assemblies, um, so we can move on to the fun stuff now. Uh, real quick, um, as I talked about last night, um, the magnetic RPM sensor assembly is actually built into the clutch stack. Uh, your magnets go into the clutch bell. This nice um, uh, mount bolts right there. Gives you a couple of different mounting positions, options for the sensors. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Now through trial and error, I have learned that with my Align R magnetic RPM sensor, I need to be in the second hole here in the top hole on the bracket. That gives that puts my sensor in, the, in a really good position to read the magnets accurately. Um, depending upon what sensor you're using, you have to play with that. Um, I know guys run the, the uh, Futaba magnetic RPM sensor works great. Uh, I know a lot of guys run the Spectrum RPM sensors. Um, if your Flybars unit likes backplate sensors and you prefer to go that route, by all means go right ahead. You just won't need this bracket. Um, my Icon systems use this micro JST plug that comes standard on the Align RPM sensor, so I like to use the Align sensor. Uh, real quick tip. Um, before you try to put the magnets into the clutch bell, uh, take your magnets and stick them together. Um, because the RPM sensor looks for a positive pole, you got to make sure that one magnet has a positive pole up and then another magnet has a negative pole up. Uh, we don't really care which magnet is what. Uh, we're only putting two magnets in for weight purposes so that it balances. Um, if you stick them together, just because we, we all know that opposites attract, these two magnets stuck together this surface touching, uh, one's a positive, one's a negative. So I can take my Sharpie and color the top of the two exposed sides red. And now when I, I can separate these and I will know which side need to be up. So now I can mount, I can mount those magnets in my and my clutch, either both reds up or both reds down, doesn't matter. I know I have opposite poles there. Uh, just a quick tip I picked up on the forum years ago. Works great. Um, I love having a Sharpie around. You never know when you're going to need it. I like red. Uh, too many things we work with in this hobby are black, so a black Sharpie um, tends to blend in. Red sticks out really well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut the camera and glue in my magnets. I just use a uh, medium instant glue, uh, CA glue to hold those guys in. Um, I'm going to get the magnets in and, and mount the sensor. When I come back I'll show you the finished assembly. Okay, there you go. I've got the uh, magnets in the clutch bell. One, two. I've got uh, both my red marks on those magnets ended up up. I just put a little CA in the bottom of the, of the cup. Uh, stick a the magnet to the end of one of my allens and just push it right in and then just gently wipe off the extra CA that, that comes out. It's pretty easy. Magnet is adjusted. This is going to be kind of hard to see on the video, but I've got this gap at probably about a millimeter. The Align RPM sensor is pretty sensitive. Uh, Icon puts out plenty of power for it, um, so you don't need it to be paper, paper thin, but you want to, once I get this on the helicopter and get the um, fly bar unit on and in a position where I can test the magnetic read. Um, I can adjust that if I need to. And I talked about it uh, yesterday, but when you see this in the actual frame, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Getting to this sensor to maintain it or adjust it while it's mounted in the helicopter couldn't be any easier. It's, there's just nothing in the way. It's a piece of cake. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop there on the clutch. That's as far as I'm going to take the clutch stack tonight. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, cut over. I want to get the fan shroud and the motor out and we're going to talk about getting the fan on. Welcome back. As you can see I have my OS 105 motors uh, out. I've got the uh, fan hub, the clutch. Uh, N7 uses a standard two-piece uh, fan shroud assembly. Uh, you've got some standoffs and some various bolts to hold the shroud together and, and also hold the shroud into the frame. A um, couple things I want to touch on. You want to make sure that you, on these bolts, on the pla holding the plastic hub fan to the metal aluminum hub, you do want to check to make sure those are Loctited. Uh, you don't want to go silly snugging those down because um, you don't want to warp the fan hub, but you do want to Loctite them. And when you tighten them back up, standard torque specifications, you know, you're going to go cross each other. Snug, 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 snug again, snug, snug, snug. 
don't go around the circle today. That's actually going to promote warping the fan. Uh, these fans are really high quality, move a lot of air. Never seen one that was that was out of balance. Uh, another reason why you do not want to mess with putting magnets in a fan. It's just so easy to get the fan out of balance. Uh, as we said before, the um, hub on this is a pinch style. It goes down over the shaft of the crankshaft and pinches as well as the um, motor uh, crankshaft nut goes in there. The clutch on this is a solid assembly. Um, on the N5C is a similar clutch except it's milled out for, um, for weight purposes. There's not enough mass need to engage the head. This one being very solid, it's, it has a lot of mass there, a lot of force to engage the clutch. It holds very, very well. The one-way bearing is already pressed in, but you are going to want to put some, some oil on it. Uh, I always use my TriFlow uh, pin oil lubricator for these one-way bearings. That one-way bearing is what is what the start shaft grabs to start the to start the motor. Um, you make sure that's oiled up or it could squeak or fail. So put some oil on that. Uh, the fan shroud itself, uh, pretty standard. This fan shroud is designed to offer optimum cooling on any of uh, the 91 to 105, even the OS1, the YS120 uh, big block motors. Uh, a little bit of trimming is required for the particular motor application. It's just too difficult to have this a one-size-fits-all. You're going to want to trim it so you have maximum clearance on the motor. It takes two seconds with the right tools. Piece of cake. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the fan on the crank, get the clutch um, installed with Loctite, oil that up so I can set the motor off the side, um, and I'll be back. All right, there you go. Fan hub is on, clutch is on. Uh, make sure you do absolutely put Loctite on those clutch bolts. Uh, same tightening pattern, snug, 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 snug. You don't want to just crank one down, crank one down. Uh, you want to make sure that clutch is perfectly flush and on there evenly. Uh, motor is prepped. Uh, next, I'm going to take my fan shroud, uh, place it on here, and uh, just kind of eyeball what needs trimmed a little bit. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to drop the motor on you. Just uh, kind of put it in there and just kind of eyeball. You don't have to take a whole lot out. It's very, very minor trimming. Anyone who's ever built a 90 Nitro knows you got to trim the fan with the shroud a little bit. Um, when I come back, I'll have the fan shroud trimmed up and mounted, and I'll show you what the complete engine assembly looks like. All right, guys. Fan shroud is all trimmed and installed. Um, just It really is just a matter of taking just a little bit off the sides here. Uh, my motor has a velocity stack, so a little bit of trim for that. It really took, with a Dremel and a Zacto knife, it literally took me eight minutes to trim that. Piece of cake. Um, <clears throat> Going to allow you to run any motor you want. Small block, big block, GT15, gaster, whatever. That fan's a completely, cut, completely adjustable to do your needs. Uh, the shroud itself is hand, held on with a combination of things. There are four um, small metric screws that hold the two sh shroud halves together. Down inside these larger channels are these hex shaped pieces that go in there. There are some um, threaded rod that go into those. You're going to want to lock tight that. And then you've got these standoffs that go out here and meet the frame. Uh, unlike the N5C, the fan shroud and motor must be removed from the N7 in one, it's one assembly. So there's absolutely no reason why you can't go ahead and lock tight up all these standoffs, get it all ready to go, set the motor off the side, and once the frame's built, you can slide it right in. Uh, piece of cake, guys. Uh, fan, entire fan assembly built in 15 minutes. All right, guys. Fan shroud, motor assembly completely done. Standoffs on. Uh, threaded rod Loctite. Standoffs Loctite to the threaded rod. Uh, as you can see, there's, there's plenty of play in that um, shroud, so we can get this thing centered and get it lined up so nothing rubs. Uh, we are going to set that to the side, and I am going to grab the main frames and the box of carbon fiber, and we're going to start building the frame. When I get back, I'll have the uh, one frame half and some of the frame standoffs laid out to talk about. Well, as you can see, we've got lots of stuff sitting on the table right now. I've got all the carbon fiber um, frame stiffeners, the anti rotation bracket, the gyro tray, tail fin, rear supports. These are the skid mounts. These are all three main bearing blocks, motor mounts, bag full of frames, uh, frame spacers, boom clamps. Um, this is what we're going to focus on tonight. Hopefully by the end of this video tonight, I will have this the mainframe done and it's sitting on the skids. Um, uh, real quick, while I've got your attention, I want to talk about the importance of sanding these one last time. Um, you should always sand carbon fiber frames. Uh, again, Matt does a fantastic job 
keeping on his machine shop to make sure they use uh, fresh bits. You don't have a lot of machine marks on the carbon. Um, but it is carbon fiber. It is cut with a machine. You are going to want to round these edges off a little bit. One tip a fellow team member gave me, uh, once you get them sanded down, put a little thin CA on what you sanded just to kind of seal the carbon. You'll kind of give it kind of a soft edge as well. Nitros vibrate. I don't care how well balanced your motor is, how well balanced your drivetrain is, they're going to vibrate. Um, amplifying the chafing effect on wires. Now, I'm not a big believer, not, not a big fan, I should say, of looming servo wires, but on this helicopter, I'm looming them. On my pre-production N7, um, I use protection anywhere the, wi the wire touched a zip tie or a corner of the frame. On this one, I'm going to take it one step further and just loom the wires just to be safe, but I'm still going to lightly sand this carbon fiber to make sure. But I'm not going to bore you make, you make you watch me do that. But I'm, I'm going to go ahead and stop the camera. I'm going to uh, sand the frame, set them to the side, and um, pull the, the different various metal pieces out and uh, start prepping those for assembly. When we come back, I'll have started putting some of the uh, frame pieces together. All right, so I've got all the carbon fiber laid out, uh, edges lightly sanded, nothing, wrong, nothing uh, too fancy there. I'm going to set this stuff off to the side real quick. I want to talk about the frame spacers for a second. The N7 does introduce us to a couple of new styles of frame spacers. When you open your bag of frame spacers, you're going to quickly notice that these are not all alike. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, see if you can see this a little better. Uh, what you have is you have the standard frame spacer that you've seen this on the E7, you've seen these on the E7 SE. It is a round aluminum dowel with a slightly, slightly squared off sides so you can meet flush against the carbon fiber. These are used on the to hold the carbon fiber pieces on. They bolt through like this. In the kit though you're going to notice we have a new completely round um, frame spacer. Now this frame spacer accepts a four millimeter bolt. These frame spacers go around the key uh, key points around the motor uh, just for extra strength. Um, there are three of these four millimeter mounts and they are going very specific places. One goes in front of the motor, one goes in the rear of the motor, and one goes in the back, the one with the longer bolts. This is where it goes in the back corner of the frame where your boom supports mount. Uh, no longer a need for the brass insert on the boom support. Um, you're going to use the 4 millimeter bolt there. Just wanted to make sure you see there, there is a difference there. Um, one of these, two of these, rather, two of these uh, um, conventional uh, mounts you're used to seeing are a little bit different. One of them has the um, male pieces of the new front canopy mount, these metal stems. So that's going to end up on the very nose of the helicopter. So that ends up on the nose of the ESC tray. And this one, it's a standard mount, but the instead of having the countersunk Phillips heads, it has a standard cap screw. This goes on the very bottom of the frame. These cap screws go into the bottom plate. If you, you can take all the screws out and use these standard um, frame, frame spaces anywhere you want. But if you take a second and set these to the side, these two go in a very specific place. Um, if you don't get the uh, mounts in the right place, um, the canopy's not going to go on. So pay, pay particular attention to those two mounts. Um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to cut the camera and I'm going to get all of the little standoffs on the carbon fiber pieces. Um, so I'll be ready to start assembling the frame. All right, so I got all of the little carbon fiber pieces with their mounts in, uh, gyro mount. Uh, now I'm ready to start assembling the mainframe. Uh, I just want to touch base on this one more time. Um, Reemphasize, this is a modular frame system. Uh, the front the front half and the, re and the back half of the frames are two separate pieces. Uh, that's going to allow you to replace just a broken quadrant. You don't have to replace the entire side of the frame if you have a crack. Um, the assembly is pretty straightforward. The um, three motor mounts, the torque tube transmission, and the um, various frame spacers are the bulk of the reinforcement of the frame. Uh, you can build the entire frame before dropping the motor in, and that's what I intend to do. I'm going to get all, everything bolted to one side, uh, one side of the frame, and then uh, bolt the, second, the back second side of the frame on, and uh, then drop the motor in. I'm going to stop and show you my progress as I proceed. I'm not going to sit here and record the entire assembly of the frame. So I'll mount a couple of pieces and show you what that looks like, mount a couple more, show you what that looks like, and then um, 
show you the finished product. So uh, at this point, you're just going to use uh, the, you're going to use the bulk of the aluminum pieces you have left. Uh, it's really going to start looking like a helicopter now. I'm going to take a second to show you my progress. I talked in the um, Oh, box opening video about the front corner frame doublers. I wanted to show you that. This is a good opportunity. What I have here is, is going to become the left side front frame piece. Um, the first of my four of my new four millimeter frame standoffs goes here. The skid support uh, mount goes here. Then you've got a standard um, spacer that goes on right there. But all four of these screws uh, are holding on this extra piece of CF. So you've got two pieces of two millimeter CF doubled up there. That corner is very, very rigid. You're not going to have any problems with that being weak. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the, uh, the other side, the other back half of the frame uh, started and we'll be back. Now is a really great time to go ahead and put the fuel tank grommet in. Uh, the frame piece is, is loose. There's nothing hindering you from really getting in there and working it, turning it around. Uh, there's two things on this I want to give you a tip. I apologize. I don't remember the name of the of the uh, gentleman escaped me right now that gave me this tip, but uh, I hope he'll speak up when he sees this because he deserves to get credit. The real easy way to do this tubing, put this in some warm water. It gets real little softer, a little more malleable. Then you can really kind of flex it in there. Uh, the second tip is um, get it started, get it all the way around. Don't try to guess and trim the rubber. You're going to want to make sure that you cut it right. You don't have a whole bunch of extra of this. Um, get it in there, work it around, make sure it's in the cracks, of the, you know, into the corners really well. And then find out where your spot needs to be. There you go. So I've got one side of the fuel, of the fuel tank grommet in and ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and start and do the same thing to the other side and start putting the frame uh, spacers on.